In the 1860s, there were many known elements, and scientists arranged them all from the lowest to the highest mass. However, there were many gaps where the mass difference between two elements was quite large, large enough for a Russian scientist to propose that elements existed in between these gaps that hadn't been discovered yet. His name was Dmitry Mendeleev, and he was correct. He even predicted the melting point and other characteristics of these elements quite accurately, even though these elements had never been discovered or seen by anyone at the time. Born in Siberia, Mendeleev lost his father when he was only 13. Without many other options, his mother rode him on horseback 1,600 miles to St. Petersburg, where he was enrolled in St. Petersburg University. Mendeleev was a brilliant student and would often write elements on index cards, rearranging them and playing a sort of chemical solitaire. His best organization of them included elements with similar characteristics on one side of the periodic table, like potassium, rubidium, and cesium. These elements all react with water and always gain a charge of positive one when they react. On the other side of his periodic table, he put elements that gain a charge of negative one, like chlorine, fluorine, and bromine. This organization was accepted as the universal periodic table, and Mendeleev received full credit as the father of the periodic table. In 1955, element 101 was named in his honor. Scientifically, this made sense for Glenn Seaborg and Al Giorso, who discovered Mendelevium in California. They were American scientists honoring a Russian scientist, right in the middle of the Cold War when the United States had a major political conflict with Russia. Many Americans opposed their decision, but the scientists wanted to show that science rises above politics. And actually, the leader of Russia, Premier Khrushchev, reportedly loved the idea. Naming element 101 Mendelevium may not have been such a bad idea. It may have settled some military tension between the United States and Russia. It might even be the reason why no large-scale fighting ever happened between the two sides. What are some ways you think science can impact politics? What would you name Element 101 if you had discovered it in the middle of the Cold War? Think about it.